Let's have a look at different types of gradients, blend mode, clipping the gradients to the text and border, and using CSS variables inside of the gradients. If I use a normal color right here, it's not going to look very nice. Even if I choose a better color than this, it's never working quite right because flat color is just a flat color. Now, what if I want to add a gradient to this box? Let's have a look at the different types of gradients we have. The solid color gradient is essentially a linear gradient that only uses one color. Then there is a normal linear gradient. Then there is a radial gradient and a conic gradient. Let's play with the linear gradient for a bit. I'm going to try to pick a different color for the first stop. For example, going with something like this. Then I'm going to try and keep this lower part maybe transparent. Now I feel like this color should be darker. Something like this maybe. We can try and add another stop. We can also pl play with the angle. Something like this. And let's also play with a radial gradient. If we change the position of it and the shape of it, it suddenly becomes a little bit more interesting. Now, as we have looked at different types of gradients, let's have a look at the blend mode. The background color behind the gradient is changing the look, but what I can also use is the blend mode, which has interesting options here. I'm just going through those options one by one. And that decides how the upper layer of the background is transitioning into the lower level behind it. Now let's have a look at how we can clip the gradient. First of all, let's have a look at this text. It has this color, which we don't need. Now we don't see any color at all. And this is gonna change as soon as we add a gradient. Even with the basic gradient black to transparent, we already see the gradient itself. But what we really want is this clip property, which needs to be set to text. And now this gradient applies as a color for this text. We can change that to something lighter in here and something like this. This way we have a gradient that applies to the color of the text. In order to create a border gradient, we need to fundamentally create two layers. One layer that applies to the entire content and the other layer that applies only to the border. First of all, let's make the border a little bit thicker so that we can better see the border itself. And we need to change the color of the border to transparent because we don't really need to see the border color. We want to see the gradient that applies to the border. Now we need to add two layers of a background. One layer is going to be the layer that you can see for the background. And that layer needs to apply to the padding box. Let's change its color to something more suitable. And the second layer, which is the most important one, is going to apply specifically to the border box. And now you can see the border that we are changing over here actually applies only to the border and not to everything else because we see on top of it the gradient that applies to the rest of the area. And this gradient is only affecting the border that we clipped to. Now that we have looked at clipping the gradient to the border and text, let's have a look at using CSS variables. If you are building with a design system, you don't want to have a bunch of different gradients floating around. What you want is the gradient to be dependent on the base color that you have defined. Now I'm going to use this color, for example, as a variable. First of all, we need to copy this color and create a variable. I'm going to go to, let's say, global root and create this variable. I am going to call it. Now, as we have this color, I can come back. And instead of 
hard coding this value of this color, I can choose to define it using the variable by removing this color here and color background is already in our autocomplete and I can just click on it and it's already used. You can see exactly the same color but now it's variable and it's reusable. And you can do the same thing for the position of the stop and for any other property of the gradients, including the midpoint position or angle or anything else really. You can build your entire gradient out of lots of different variables and everything changes as soon as you change a single variable. And this is the power of the real development environment.